Hey everybody, welcome to our disasters class. We're gonna talk about a whole bunch of stuff in this class that deals with disasters in the, in the broadest sense. We're gonna talk about the science of disasters in terms of what happens, how they have them happen, what are the drivers of those things. But also, given our background in ESRM and our interests, we're not just going to stick to the physics and the science per se. We're also interested in all aspects of disasters and how they manifest. The conditions before the disaster starts, the conditions during the disaster, and the things that happen in the wake of these hazards and disasters. Right now, I'm in Thousand Oaks. I am just off Herbs Road. This is six days after the Herbs fire struck here. This is a relatively small fire. And Chris, we understand homes are threatened and evacuations are underway. That's exactly right, Giovanni. You're taking a live look near Herbs Road, just off of Herbs Road and right off of Moore Park Freeway. You can see the fire department I've seen down here started as an half acre brush fire brush fire and has quickly and swiftly grown in size. You can see there's a group of homes right there on the right hand side of your screen, right along the freeway. That's going to be Lemonberry Place and there's several dozen homes that are in the process of being evacuated by the Sheriff's Department. They are also assisting in evacuations on the other side of this fire. That's going to be the east side of the fire near uh, Fernley Court and Maple Knoll Place. All of these homes now under threat here as this fire continues to grow off of Herbs Road. Again, a northeast wind uh, uh, really uh, helping this fire grow in size. In just the last few minutes, there are additional engines on the way out here. We're going to keep a close eye on this developing story. Again, we're right off of the 23 freeway here in Thousand Oaks. Reporting live from Air 7 HD. This broke out. This was in January. This was in a time we normally would be having huge rain, lots of moisture, lots of stuff coming down. And, uh, you know, the rainy season, the middle of winter for us. And uh, instead, this fire got going because of very, very intense winds. And indeed, in the, in the six days since this fire is initiated, we had lots of crazy winds. Um, uh, the last two days, the strongest winds in several years, in fact, that knocked out power to all areas around the county and have induced lots of public safety power shutoffs, all kinds of stuff. Um, as we look here, this wind-fueled fire was relatively small. This was contained relatively quickly. This was contained um, over the course of really just a few hours and it only extended to, um, broke out at, at sunset, only really extended a total of a bit less than 250 acres in size, so relatively small. But what we can see here is the classic aftermath of a natural hazard. This is what we tend to focus on. We tend to focus on flames. We tend to focus on drama. We tend to focus on visuals that seem very scary and threatening. But this is really much more of the story of natural disasters. Here we have a culvert. This culvert is designed so that this this uh, watershed here, when water comes down here, it doesn't top up, flood this parking lot, flood into the road. This infrastructure is a key part of disasters. Now that this has happened, all this hillside is denuded. All this hillside is now easily going to shed a lot of water, a lot of moisture, a lot of materials much more quickly than if we'd not had this fire. So that means there's one more material coming in here quickly, two more debris coming down. So this culvert is gonna be much more likely to be plugged up. All kinds of problems that will potentially come in the wake of this, although the attention is gone. As we go up and look around, we can start to see this particular fire happened in an area where there aren't a ton of people, where there aren't a ton of um, uh, uh, valuable elements of our society per se. It's mostly um, single family homes in this area. And uh, we are on the edge of uh, the Conejo. This, this is a, a piece of the property of the Conejo Open Space Conservation Authority, COSCA. And so uh, obviously the recreational air opportunities here, the, the visual, the view shed was impacted, but relatively minor, relatively um, a, a small fire here. But the elements that started this fire, 
the consequences in the wake of this fire um, are the same, whether we're talking about a, a, a fire here in Thousand Oaks, a fire in Los Angeles, a fire in New Delhi, what have you. Um, they will play out differently based on the setting. They'll play out differently based on the intensity and size of the disaster. But these elements are all here. And this is what we're going to talk about this semester. This is what we're going to spend some time trying to figure, trying to probe, trying to understand. And so I'm super stoked. We're going to have a great class. Can't wait for, um, for this class to get going. And uh, can't wait to talk about disasters with you guys and to have a better, complete understanding so that in the future, not only can we respond better to our natural disasters, our human disasters, these challenges of our society, but actually all elements of a just and resilient society and culture. So that, that's what this class can be about. Can't wait for you guys to get going. I will see you guys soon.